Hello, and welcome back to the Curious Cube. With the AMC8 going on right now, we wanted to spend some time and talk about how we prep for competition day. And this can apply to any competition, not just the AMC8. But if you are about to take the AMC8, the, you can try out our tips. So speaking of the AMC8, uh, it was my first competition, so I actually have really fond memories of it. What about you guys? Uh, I... I only ever did the AMC eight once. I think like it's it's like a good competition. Like, like you know, it's not the be all end all any or or anything like that of Mathcon is. But like, it can definitely be like a good, like it can be a nice place to start if you're just getting into math contests. In fact, I uh, took the AMC eight fewer times than Luke. In fact, I have just never taken it at all. Uh, wow. what, what ended up happening was uh, I found out about the AMC eight in December of my eighth grade year. And apparently the test already happened in November. So I was like, kind of sad I missed out on the AMC8. I for those it, of you who don't- I took oh, it for those five of you... times. So I took it more times than both of you combined. <laughs> <laughs> and the AMC8 used to be in November. It's not, it didn't used to be in January. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. Yeah, that's trippy. And now the AMC 10, 12 are in November. My, my brain is confused. My brain is confuzzled. <laughs> I, I did have a good time with the AMC. I never got the full 25 out of 25, but, uh, you know, I, it, it, it was still really fun. I still really like that. Like, I, I still really like really fast paced competitions. So uh, that was, it was just like a really nice, like kind of sprint style contest. But of course there's, you know, much more to math than just whether you can solve 25 problems in 40 minutes. There's, yeah. you know, so, but you know, it can be, it can be fun. It could be a nice introduction, but there's a lot more to math than just solving a lot of stuff really fast. Yeah, I think the AMC8 is like a really good stepping stone for like a lot of the competitions that many students will face in high school. Yeah, and if it, uh, I'm gonna guess that for some of you guys, AMC8 is your first contest because that's what it was for me. Uh, so if it turns out that you like it, then make sure to check out all the other competitions there are, like AMC, the AMC1012 and uh, whatever else. Like, but if you happen like, not to like it, you should still check out the other contests because some of them, like, you know, they, they, they get longer as they get harder. So if you think it's too fast, like, there are other contests that are not as fast. Yeah, this is certainly true. After you've done all your mathematical preparation, how do you mentally prepare for competition day? Any tips or opinions? So uh, in my opinion, I think one of the important things, mo one of the most important things to keep in mind is just not to burn yourself out before the test day. Uh, maybe Luke might have some differing opinions about this, but like personally, I would try to like not do much math in the days leading up to the contest. Um, yeah, for me, uh, sometimes it's a bit different. Sometimes I like to do like math, like right before a contest, but like apparently this is like not the standard thing people do. I think you should, you know, do whatever has worked for you. Um, in that regard. Um, but like, you certainly don't have to do math right before a contest. Like it's, it can be fine to just relax, but yeah, like, you know, it, it can be, you know, don't like when you have the contest, don't, I guess, don't stress about it too much. Just like, it's just a contest. It's like, it's not going to make or break your future. You know, just like, it's good to, you know, remain calm about it and to, and you know, it can be nice to to try to enjoy the contest and to like actually enjoy the math itself as much as you would enjoy it if you weren't encountering the problems in a contest. <clears throat> uh, I've been on both ends on, of the spectrum because uh, I have this tendency to like do a ton of practice problems before some contests. And in some contests, I, ba I barely even remember that they exist and I just like sit around and then until the contest rolls around and I just do my best. I will say that I actually get better scores when I completely chill out instead of um, like cramming a bunch. The cramming makes me feel a little bit better in the short term because I feel like I'm doing something to like prepare for it. But um, I think the psychological effect is a bit more noticeable because like by relaxing and like practically forgetting about the contest, I am like uh, I'm getting myself in a better mind state, which has a bigger effect on me than like doing a few more practice problems. Uh, but different people, like different things, work for different people. So that uh, it, it like you know, I whatever works for you is. Uh, but you could try both. 
honestly. And of course, it sort of goes without saying that, like, whatever things you want to do, like, right leading up to the contest is no substitute for, you know, like, the math you need to do, like, in the months leading up to the contest. Like, but, you know, it can be a nice... Yeah, that's very true. You know. I guess, like... Yeah, one other thing that Luke alluded to that I want to stress again is that, like, no, it's okay to do, it's okay if you, like, don't do as well as you would have liked. Like, you, the, the score you get on a contest, even though it might seem like it might determine your entire future at that point in time, like, this is just not very true, I think. Um, yeah. Like, you can definitely, you know, even if you don't get a good score on a contest, even, you know, even if you don't get a good score on the AMC 8 or the AMC 10 or 12 or the AMI or the USAM or whatever, even if you, and even if you were thinking, oh no, like if you're thinking, oh no, I didn't get a good score on this contest. Now I won't get into the such and such a college. First of all, maybe you will. And second of all, even if you don't like, you still have like your whole, the whole rest of your life ahead of you. You can, you know, you can still do good. You can still do neat things, even if you didn't go to a you know super fancy college. Even you can even okay, we're we're leaving the we're leaving the college talk out of this. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to assume a slippery slope, like it's not. You can do lots of things, even if you yeah. think you've missed. Like if you think you missed a step in something, you like you know you didn't miss anything. It's fine. It's just yeah. One con one contest will not. Well, will not determine you for the rest of your life. And I say this as a person who has bombed many contests and thought that those contests were going to be the end of my math career. There were multiple times where I failed. I was like, okay, this is it. I'm quitting, boys. This is the end. And then I didn't quit. So, you know, and I think it turned out all the better for me. <laughs> but yeah, like you want to have fun. You want to like, you know, remember the reason you like math and just enjoy the problems for that. Yeah, I guess speaking of this, like, after I took tests, one of the things I would always like to do is, like, figure out how to do the problems I didn't know how to do, right? And then I always had this habit of, like, sharing my favorite problems uh, with, like, sometimes my school friends who hadn't taken the test. Well, only do this if you're allowed to share the problems. Yeah, obviously. definitely, like, don't but... jeopardize the integrity of the contest. In particular, I would remind people that the window of the AMC8 is a whole week long. So, like, you can't discuss the AMC8 the same day you take it. Yeah, uh, I, I I actually do something similar with, uh, to hold it in that like I take my favorite problems from the test and then I share them with some of my other friends, especially some of my not math friends, because I want to I want to just tell them about like this cool problem that I really enjoyed during <laughs> the test. Uh, the difference in this case is I don't go back and solve the problems that I didn't do until like at least a fair few months after the contest, because then I'll just be racked with, oh, my God. You're so dumb. Why didn't you do this in the contest? And then I'll just have horrible guilt. Also, it can be worth trying to think about, like, you know, if you have a problem on the contest, maybe if there's an interesting, like, generalization, like an interesting way to extend the problem. And, you know, there can be interesting relationships between a problem and, like, other, you know, areas of math and things beyond just that one question. It can be interesting to think about. So our next question comes from Angela, who asks, what really motivates you to do math? Is it just out of passion, or do you guys have a goal in mind, or competing against a friend or something? How do I develop passion for math? Um, developing a passion kind of takes, it, uh, it takes time. There's going to be times where you hate it. There is, I, I don't, know if there's like a person who has just always loved math okay maybe luke but i don't know <laughs> i've never been in a state where i've just always loved math and i think that would just be like a very hard state to keep um what i think more than passion is tenacity like you want to just make sure you don't give up um i, I it's very easy to get frustrated with doing um uh, if you don't do well but um what's more important is that you don't just keep going yeah, I guess for me, um, like motiv the motivation for math originally, like used to be out of a desire to be better than other people or to be the best. But I don't, th I don't think like this is actually the most healthy mindset to be in, because there, are, like the reality is, there will really always be people that are just always better than you. So like now, I think like very in very much the opposite way. Instead of doing math contests to be better than other people, like I do it for the interesting math that I find along the way. The real math was the friends we made. Uh, wait, that, that I messed up that, that line. <laughs> um, uh, but like, wait, okay, actually, Luke, go oh, ahead. Yeah, like, um, 
it, it's also worth pointing out that like there is more to math than math contests. Like you can have a whole like you can do research. Like you know, there's more to math than just someone wrote this problem. They told me that they have ensured me in advance that this problem can be solved in four and a half hours. You know, sometimes you have research where it's like, okay, I'm going to, you know, work on this same problem for months. I don't even know if I'm going to solve it because no one, like, this is an open research problem. Like, you have, you know, like, with things like that, like, <clears throat> like I guess somehow, to, to relate it back to the thing about, like, whether, like, about a passion for math, like, um, I guess, like, if you, what do I want to say? Like there, you shouldn't just think about, like you definitely don't want to just be thinking of math, of, of it as like, okay, I'm going to do math contest because I want to, you know, beat my friend. I want to beat, so I want to, you know, be in the top 1%. I want to, you know, do math as, you know, like, you know, it's you like it's good not to just look at it as a means to an end and you definitely don't want to be looking at it as being like competitive because like you know and you know when you get to the point of maybe doing math research like there's you know like you it, it's good to be to think of it as a more like collaborative thing like if you're trying to solve an open problem like somehow i don't know maybe it's like everyone like if you're all in this together it's not X against Y. It's like all of humanity versus the Riemann hypothesis or whatever. <laughs> it, but, it, you know, it doesn't have to be one person against another. And this is, you know, a really nice thing about math because, like, if you have chess, like, you know, chess is fun. Chess has lots of good things. But one of the drawbacks of chess is, like, chess is a game of one person against another where one of them, where they're not both going to win. Whereas in math, it's like, you know, you can do math like it doesn't have to be a contest. And so like math contests are good if you like contests, but like there's more to it than winning. And like you can discover the like the, you know, math for its own sake instead of math for contests sake. And, yeah, I guess. and, math, and also math for the sake of applications to science, I should say, too. Yeah, I Which guess like building important. off of that. Uh, like another thing I want to say is just I, I always did math contests for like the 25% of problems that I just really really enjoyed and then I would just like do the other 75% because well I had to and I finished all the problems that I liked anyways I guess it got a bit too extreme in that like I would never I would never prepare for the subjects that like I just hated like I hated inequalities I hated functional equations so I just like never prepared for them and I never did practice problems and then when they came on contests I just got really sad because I didn't know how to do them yeah uh so here are these two boys telling you oh you shouldn't do them for the sake of being competitive oh you know you, you have to do it for the sake of loving the math and there's so many types of math and I'm gonna be the person to tell you that like you, you're still gonna have this competitive urge to beat the other people uh and i know this because i felt because i feel this like every time um i i will also be the person to admit that it, yes it is unhealthy but um it's also just a very human thing mm -hmm. to just feel kind of com it, it's, a, it's a math contest you are competing uh so there is definitely some aspect of competition uh i would say that you probably shouldn't let it take over uh, your brain because it actually just like dampens your comp test performance. Like if you just think about your score, then uh, your your that I guarantee you, like your score will be shot because like you're you're just too uh, caught up in how well you're doing rather than just like the problems themselves. You just still focus on the problems themselves first and foremost. Um, but I'm also aware that it like the competitive urge can can, can kind of get to you. Um, and to that, I guess I would say. Uh, you probably shouldn't try to compete against other people's score if that's the case, because that is just completely out of your control. Uh, like, if you just keep telling yourself, oh, but uh, Billy Joe got higher than me on this and this, uh, I have to make sure I, I do better on this so that he doesn't think I'm completely stupid. Uh, that's hard, because, like, how well Billy Joe does is completely out of your, is still out of your control. What you, sh what you might want to do instead is just keep competing against how you were before. So, uh, seeing your score increase, uh, that is already, like, extremely satisfying. And it's also within your control, because, uh, you see how much you've improved, you've seen things that may have not have worked as well, uh, sometimes 
con some contests are harder than others, but you can still see yourself just improving. And then uh, you can take away lessons from that instead of just thinking, oh my gosh, I did so bad. Now all of my friends are going to think that I'm really dumb. You, you could like take away things uh, from your failures instead of just worrying what other people think or worrying about uh, the number that is your score. And of course, there's also like a good side to competition in the sense that like, you know, it can sort of be a double edged sword, because on the one hand, you have this element of like, you know, my friend and I are both like, you know, maybe it's like, oh, we both want to do well. And so that motivates us to, to, to try really hard and do our best. But at the end of the day, like, you know, it's all friendly and fun and games and, you know, no one really gets their feelings hurt. That's, that's good. You know, you want to, you, you know, competition can make you want to get better and then you get better and everyone gets better and it's everyone wins in that's in the sense of everyone wins. Like everyone, like everyone has improved everyone, every sort of everyone comes out better, but on the other, and, and that's a, you know, you want that, but on the, not that it has to be competitive, but, you know, but on the other hand, if it was something like, oh, that John Doe, he always beats me on contests. Oh, I, I really hate that John Doe. I hope he fails. That that's not good. That would be, you know, kind of toxic. That And, and so like, it's, it's sort of, you want to make sure that it's like friendly. And of course you don't have to really care about the competition at all for this. If you just, you know, if you want to just care about math for its own sake or for the sake of, you know, applications to, to science in the real world, that that's, that's good too. I had a per I had a person like that. Uh, I uh, they they may or may not be watching this right now. If you are, hello. Uh, but we butted heads a lot back in the old days of contests. Uh, but eventually, uh, but uh, contests aside, like we ended up growing to like respect each other. Thank you for watching the second episode of the Curious Cube, and good luck on the AMC eight. Yeah, and congrats to those who have taken it already. And if you're watching this video during the AMC 8, that's cheating. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we look forward to answering your questions and seeing you next time. Bye, and stay curious.